So we're out here to demonstrate a little bit about motion control photography, in particular time-lapse photography with motion control devices. But in terms of time-lapse photography, an intervalometer is really all you need. You pretty much put the tripod into place, set up your camera, attach an intervalometer, and then you're going to have a series of images that you can then stitch together on a some type of post-production software that allows you to make a movie out of those files. So that's the basic time-lapse setup that everyone's familiar with. Um, but when you want to add dolly shots into a time-lapse shot, things become more difficult. Obviously, if you're doing a dolly shot or involving motion through a steady cam or through handheld or some type of photography with real-time 24 frame or 30 frame per second photography or videography, you're going to be shooting on devices that allow you to just pretty much move in real time. But of course, with time lapse, that's not how it works. We often have delays, long delays in between our shots, um, and they need to be controlled, and the, the camera me needs to move at a very steady pace so that when it's all stitched together, the movement looks seamless and fluid. And so if we have jumps and we have, if we were trying to move something like this dolly here, if we were trying to move it manually, we would have issues because we'd be pushing either too fast or too slow. And when we stitched all the still images together to make the, 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 uh, the composite movie, we'd end up with speed variations of all sorts. So a device like this is really designed to eliminate that from the process and to create a nice, smooth, fluid motion however you would like. So I'll just quickly step over here. This unit in particular has a joystick control that can be used to set up and calibrate the starting and end position. So if my end position of my camera was going to be way here at the end, I could simply dolly this over at full speed, use my controls here to set up a marker, and then come back to my beginning spot, and then set up another marker recorded into the little computer here. And some devices like this one are even going to help me calculate how many shots it's going to take to get a certain time lapse given the time that I want to spend photographing this time lapse. So if I know I only have an hour to do the time lapse, I can set things up so that I have the frames I need to get that. Um, so it depends on the unit that you buy. Different companies will have different options. but. On the higher end units, you'll have a lot of luxuries like that that allow you to control the camera remotely. So you can do things like control a camera like this one. Here we've got the Canon 5D up installed on, on this rig and we could control the exposure rate. We can change the shutter speed and as well as have this unit here act as the intervalometer as opposed to attaching the standard Canon inter intervalometer that we normally use for a tripod shot. So now we'll take a little more detailed look at the control unit for this particular motion control device for our time-lapse photography. And we're going to start off by walking through the setup mode for a continuous time-lapse shot that will be some sort of dolly shot. It really doesn't matter what we're doing with the dolly itself but the control is gonna always be the same type of options. So first off, we're gonna choose between something like a shoot, move, shoot, or a continuous action. What that means is the robot is either going to stop, take a picture, and then move, and then take another picture in a, you know, kind of the start and stop motion process, or it's gonna, it's gonna keep moving and never stop. It's gonna be a one continuous fluid motion. And uh, at least with this particular unit, we found good results with the continuous as opposed to the shoot, move, shoot, which has rendered kind of some issues with jerkiness and camera movement. So I'm going to go ahead and choose continuous, move on to the next option. Next setup is for exposure time. Now, this device doesn't control the camera itself in terms of the shutter speed, but when you go to manual mode on your camera and you set up your shutter speed, you simply make note of it. And I've set my shutter for about a quarter of a second. I've gone ahead and uh, coordinated that with the setting here for a quarter of a second on the exposure time. Next up, 
shutter delay, this is the time in between the shots themselves. And so the longer this delay is, the less pictures it's going to take in a given period of time and therefore give the illusion that the speed is actually playing back faster than it is and the time lapse is actually even faster. So we've gone for about a quarter of a second once again, so a fairly quick delay, not a whole lot, and that'll give us more images and a um, nice smooth fluid motion, fluid movement. And of course, if we decide that it's too slow later on, we can always speed that up in some type of post-production software. Now it's gonna give us a little feedback here. It tells us that given these settings that we've chosen, um, the runtime is gonna be 47 minutes and take 6,280 pictures, but we can adjust that. It will allow me to modify this for any length of time that I choose to shoot. So if I decide that you know 47 minutes is just not what I want, I can go up and I can extend this into something longer. But uh, as I do that, you're gonna notice that the number of pictures it takes obviously updates. And again, this is all data that's being calculated by the settings that we chose in terms of the delay and the actual shutter itself. If we're doing shots that require a lot of motion blur, if we're doing longer exposures, like two to four second exposures, then that's obviously gonna impact these numbers a great deal as to something like uh, the numbers we chose, which are fairly quick at a quarter of a second. Once you're happy with those settings, you advance to the next. And at this point, it's simply asking us to position the robot from the start position so if we wanted to do a, a dolly move that starts in the middle of the dolly, we could do that. Or if we wanted to go all the way back to the very beginning, obviously we can do that. So it's simply asking us to position the dolly where we want it. From there, we advance, and it's going to ask, do we want to delay the timer at all? So do we want this to wait before it actually begins the process? In most cases, not. But there might be certain circumstances where you're waiting for a sunset or something particular to happen and you want to delay it. At that point, it's ready to take pictures, and you can see now this device, if you can hear it, is actually controlling the camera. It's telling the camera to take the images, and it's got the intervalometer built in, so it's going to adjust the number of shots on the display here as it goes and takes these. So what may not be so readily apparent while this is happening is that, yes, indeed, the dolly device here is being told to move forward and the rope the uh, motor of the robot is actually moving it's going such a slow rate you can barely see it but that's kind of the whole key with this type of device is that because it's time lapse because we're we're progressing at the capturing the image at such a slow rate we have to have a dolly that moves just as slow but it's just as even so the human eye probably can't even detect how smooth this is going to be at this point. It's just too slow a motion. But when it's all put together in the computer, we'll then know how successful it was. And it works out quite well due to the carefully um, controlled components here and all this apparatus. So here we're setting up, we're about to do a time lapse. Uh, we've taken the dolly track. We've got about 16 feet here and we propped it up into this tree with no special rigging. Uh, about a 45 degree angle, possibly a little bit steeper. And uh, we've got a lower torque motor so that it can handle this kind of inclination, but um, any steeper than that would probably fall off. At this point, we've just balanced it out with the camera and so that the weight is roughly centered and stable. And it seems to be going fairly smooth and we'll set up for this time lapse and uh, see how it comes out.